Hi, everybody. We're Rob and Leslie Hildebrand. Welcome to the Chateau de la Griffre. Three years ago, we sold or mortgaged everything we had to buy this beautiful chateau. With the hope that we could create a special place of learning for young people to learn about their world and themselves. It's been an amazing adventure so far with so much more to come. So come along with us as we wake this sleeping beauty and restore her to her former glory. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Chateau Griffre de la Griffre. Uh, this is season five, episode three, and uh, lots of good stuff this week. We did have a good week. There's a few surprises that happened if you watch the movie, the movie, the video, and I think, uh, well, we're excited about it anyway. Yeah, there's some big things. Now, often um, when we're editing these videos, sometimes if I have something that's not quite as exciting, maybe a little boring, I put it at the back just in case you've already left by then. Uh, <laughs> or if I'm going to talk a long time about something, wah, wah, wah. I know some people are not are less interested in that. So I put that at the end. Um, today, this this week to me felt like a journey, kind of an emotional journey. Uh, okay. Maybe more for me than you, but I think for both of us, we had some ups and some downs and and... And it kind of felt like a journey, so I left everything in sequence. Um, ah. But don't skip the end because there's a really good surprise for us, like a really happy it surprise, was very good for us, yeah. and also an amazing uh, French meal. That's true. We've been doing austerity, so we've not we've not been going out for meals all the time. Maybe once a week, maybe not even. Uh, but it was Valentine's Day, and the French do meals uh, well. really well. We're really green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're in the front of the, the green, green room. Uh, you know, Anyways. Anyways. So watch the whole video. Watch the whole video. Don't don't stop until the end. Or even, I mean, you don't want to well, skip ahead. But okay. Yeah, don't, don't skip the end. Anyway, though. we're excited about a new development. So hopefully you are too. Monday morning, birds are out. Time to start working. And uh, the roofers are coming today to take a look at a couple things. I promised myself I'd stop moving laterally with these cameras. So I will try to do that. They're gonna. They're bringing a glaz, glazier. I have to take a look at this. These are actually skylights in the terrace. They're really thick glass. They're not safety glass though. So we'll see what he's gonna put in. Obviously, we would like it to match, but but that's not the big job today. The big job today is sanding. We have scraped and demolded and uh, filled everything. Now that's that's a drywall fill compound. That's not mold. Though we will go up and take a look at it. I think it's just thin. Yeah, it's just thin. Uh, mold from a distance, it looks like mold. So first job today is sanding, and then uh, we'll dust it all. And then after we dust it all, we will uh, prime, start priming. You can see the two different kinds. The white sure looks better, doesn't it? But the, the stuff at the top is actually the good stuff, the anti-humidity. So we'll see how it holds, and we'll see how this goes. Hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have a beautifully painted foyer and also staircase the staircase of course the tricky job with the ladders but we'll get her done oh i suppose this the, the staircase we're only going to move the the the, the uh, platform once so technically that hasn't been filled yet a couple of those spots but we'll get her all done all right most of the time sanding simple just like this and that gets her pretty good but occasionally it's different. Here you can see I forgot, I left a blop that should have not been left that thick. And so here we're bringing in this reinforcements. Because it would take forever. I just go like this. And that brings it way down faster. The uh, right tool makes all the difference. So smooth. Now, I missed a little spot, so I'm going to have to refill that and that. But we'll do that, and this will eventually be completely good. Boy, I was grieving earlier. I know I'm a sensitive guy, maybe too sensitive. Up here, Rose. Up here. Up here. Up here. Up. Uh, there we go, Bubs. And we got those pigeons in the attic and I tried to get them out and I tried to tell them to go out and they don't go out. Some of them went out, I rescued about seven of them, but there's a couple that just wouldn't leave and then of course they die. And I just, man, that hurts. Like I, you know, you wanna to try to figure out any way you can get them not in there, but I don't even know if, they may have found their own way in too, so it's, it's difficult. So I guess my thought is, you know, I would love to treat all the animals well, but I can at least treat this little guy well and try to help the other ones too. 
And this guy likes it when we play a little bit of fetch. He likes that a lot. So we'll take a break from sanding. Play a little fetch. Okay, remember how last month I had come out here and threw out some grass seed into this like dug up bore area and I wasn't very thorough. I literally just hucked it on. It was so chilly. Oh, there's a hole. Anyways, I wanted to see if there's anything coming up. And I mean, there is technically little tiny sprouts. Whether or not they'll make it, I don't know. It looks like there's been things out here digging a little again. However, I mean, maybe little sprouts are coming. Let's see what happens. It's supposed to be nice and warm the next few days, so we'll see if this can actually take. I think I should put another scuffle up the dirt and put a bit more on. Over here doesn't seem to have done diddly squat. I mean, sure, there's some little guys, but <laughs> um, certainly not fast. What are you doing, Bingy? <laughs> okay, I don't know how we keep getting bats inside. All the windows are closed. Where are you guys coming from? I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to be high maintenance here, but I'm just getting tired of the bats. I mean, like the windows are shut. How are you getting in? I don't know. We'll just go let them out. So for those who are wondering, this is what you do when you have a bat in your room. First thing you do, close all the windows and doors so that you can get them outside. Whoa, that was a flyby right there. Don't come here again. They tend to go in patterns. See, so if, ooh, that was close too. <laughs> I have been hit once by a bat flying by my head. Generally try not to walk too fast because they got echolocation. So I don't think they want to hit me any more than I want to hit them. All right, we're gonna open this window up. And we'll see if he just goes outside. I'm also told that they go towards the light, which doesn't make sense because they don't see. Where are we going here? Okay. So we are going to go turn off the big lights here and see if he goes outside. You'll have a nice view of it. Well, a nice view if you can see him. It's kind of dark. Okay, he's still in here. Yeah. Here we go. The big window. Absolutely massive window. You can do it, Mr. Bat. Oh, you're so close. Just go towards the nice clean air. All the little bugs you like to eat. Oh, I thought he was going there. Hmm. Oh, here he, oh, so close. There he goes, there he goes. Ah, that's all you gotta do. I hate to say it, but you are not welcome. You are not welcome. And the owl will probably pick him off. Hmm. Look at the light that's thrown. It reflects off the chateau. Cool, eh? Hey, everyone. What a day. Um, did lots of sanding. Went all the way around. It took longer than I thought. You're thinking, I was thinking, man, sanding, maybe an hour. And sanding's not that hard when you wake up. Uh, when you wake up and you're just walking around on the ground. But when you're up on a ladder, everything goes slower. And so, you know, got her done. Took some time. Uh, and then I rewarded myself with some mowing. Just a great time to think about life. And I got to thinking about life. And I got to thinking about um, the birds in the attic. Uh, the pigeons in the attic. Now, interesting day. Um, it was sunny. And so I went up to the attic and opened up all the windows. Because I want to get with the birds out. You'll remember the other day. I, I've been trying to get them out. And I, so I had the uh, I had the windows open. And... Um, and a bunch, I opened the windows and, you know, five or six of them flew straight out. And I was like, yeah, way to go pigeons, you know. 
courage. You got you to gotta do it. But then there was one little guy and he just did not want to go. And I kept, you know, I was making noises and I was trying to get him to go. But he just, for whatever reason, too scared, too content, I don't know, did not want to leave. And that was tragic. And so I, you know, finally gave up and closed the window. Well, I came back up today and sure enough, that poor little guy uh, was lying there dead. And so I felt terrible. I, I'm a sensitive guy. And, and so I'm not going to lie. I cried some tears today for God, for that little guy. I know some people are like, that's ridiculous. It's a bird, but you know what? I felt bad. And obviously we don't want that. And then, um, and then, and then towards the end of the day, I, I started walking up to the main room and there was another bird that was in there and I got almost all of them up except there's one little guy. And so I opened the window and I was like, okay, come out, go out little guy, you know, choose to live, choose to live. And, uh, um, and so I left the windows open for about five hours and I came back and sure enough, he was on the ground right by the window. I thought, great, he's going to go. And so I went, okay, let's go, let's go, time to go. And he took a couple fluttery steps towards the window, but he couldn't get up there. He was obviously um, exhausted or maybe out of water, out of food. And and so and the bird was obviously scared of me and trying to get away from me. And so then I was kind of like, oh, and I'm like, I said, no, and and... and I noticed that it couldn't fly. It was, it was trying to walk away from me, but it was having a hard time. Eventually, it just sat there and looked at me, you know, afraid, wondering if I was going to kill it, like the, all the predators in today's world. And and I was just sitting there going, it's okay, little bird. I'm, I'm a good guy. I care about you. I'm going to try to help you. And so I thought, maybe what I'll do is I'll pick up the bird and I'll put him, get him in a pail and I'll put him on the ledge outside in the gutter and there's water there and maybe they can have a little drink and then you know, the bird will maybe uh, get their strength back and be able to fly away. And so sure enough, I went up to him really talking quietly. I said, it's okay, little bird. You know, I care about you and I want to help you. And sure enough, I was able to hold him carefully and I picked him up and put him in the gutter. And then I closed the window. I thought, well, at least he's outside. And then I was like, yeah, but what if there's not enough water in the gutter? Like, and it's going to rain later. But I thought, what if he doesn't make it until it rains? And so I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to find some water. I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to get a cup of water. I'm going to put it out there. And hopefully he drinks it and recovers. And uh, and so sure enough, I was walking by. And then I remember there was a pail that had been sort of full of water from leaks. And and so I got that pail. And I thought, this is great. So I poured the pail into the gutter. So kind of water went all over the place so he could get to it. And then I got, I just found it like a little pan kind of thing to give him an inch of water. And I set that out for him. And I don't know if, you know, if he's going to find it, drink it and live or not, but he's got the chance. And, and I was just feeling super emotional about it. And then I kind of had some deep thoughts and I thought, I wonder how often we're the bird. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, there's times where you, and I'm coming up to these animals and I'm like, you just got to trust me, guys. Like, I, I want the best for you. I care about you and I want everything. And sometimes, you know, the birds will listen or they'll act and sometimes they're paralyzed with fear and sometimes you know they'll let you help them and and obviously I started thinking about myself and I, and 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 you guys and I kind of thought I wonder how often humans I wonder if we're ever in that situation where we're we're kind of the bird um and and I thought to my own situation now if you've been watching the videos you know that um uh, you know that we the first couple of years of doing this we support ourselves through my teaching job and so that was great it's going really well it's a good plan, I think. And and as time went on, you know, it be kind of kind of became clear that I really should we should be out here more. It was going really well, and uh, um, but uh, but I didn't really want to, you know, I didn't want to fly out the window. I didn't want to take the step. And God's opening the window for us, and you know, everything's ready to go. But I was kind of like, oh, I like the safety of the salary, and I like the safety of taking care of myself. I don't want to, you know, be in this dangerous situation. I was kind of like the bird who who didn't want to fly through the window. And, um, and then, so of course, uh, God helped us <laughs> through the window. He grabbed us and kind of put us through the window. And he did that by, uh, the fact that my school merged with another school and they shut down a whole bunch of departments, including my department. And so we didn't really have a choice, uh, but fortunately we were at least willing to, um, to go with it when we got the help. Um, I, uh, yeah, interesting talk. Like when we first found out about it, all the friends that we had that weren't from the university, when they first heard that my position was closing and that we were going to go out to France full time, all of them were excited. In fact, some of them were kind of like, this is a great thing. This is going to be so good for you guys. It's going to work great. And they were full of faith. And everybody was, 
everybody was great. They were all ready to fly through the window by themselves. And, and I was sitting there going, yeah, that's great. But, uh, you know, the buck kind of stops with me, you know? And so I was kind of nervous and, and like many husbands, I'm thinking, well, I have some responsibility to make sure the family's taken care of. And, uh, so I was nervous about that and didn't want to go out there. Anyways, I just got to thinking, you know, sometimes maybe some of us need to trust that there's someone out there like God, for example, who, who cares about us and wants to help us. And, uh, and I don't know, maybe, I don't know which bird you are. I know I'm the one that needed help to get through the window. Maybe you're one of those birds that you, you just, you, you see an opening and you go for it and you take the chances and you're doing great and everything's going awesome. That's great. You know, go shine your light, go do your thing. Maybe, uh, maybe you're the bird that's too scared to do anything and you don't want to, you don't want to go through the window and you're just sitting there quietly by yourself. And I guess, I guess my word to you and to me, to both of us is, you know, take the help. You know, if somebody's going to come, not everybody's bad in the world. There are some good people, you know, get out of the house, meet some people, make some friends, find a place to serve, make your community better. Uh, go to a church, you know, introduce yourself to the pastor. Let them know who you are. Start serving in a ministry and, um, and uh, get the help you need to get through the window. Emotional day. Tuesday. I thought, uh, you know, sanding this big space would just be like, uh, you know, maybe a morning, but it was a whole day yesterday. And as you, uh, as you can see, I put blue, blue markers where I had to re prime. So I'm going up and I'm cleaning them up. They say preparation is everything. And normally I have not been great at dusting after sanding. And so I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to get a nice clean surface here. Helps to have these handy little tools. All right, done the vacuuming, done the dusting, done the sanding. Now it's time to prime. Really excited about it. But first, lunch. We're getting ready to come back into this main floor guest room. And I had just started at the end of the summer painting out some of the trim. So I did halfway of the store as far as I could go without scaffolding around the base and over to this one. Now I can start, uh, Rob's using scaffolding for the stairs so we can get that finished painted. But I figured until then, let's start on the lower bits cause I can get going on that because heaven knows there's enough tall stuff to do once we get scaffolding and other things. But there's lots of little um, kind of mini wainscoting at the bottom too. So I was just gonna start on this corner and then realized this is an outside door to the outside of the front terrace. And I was like, you know, I think it's a little dirty. What do you think? And this is just since summer because I was just in here and it wasn't like this just a few months ago. So let's get her clean. All right, here we are Wednesday. Boy, it just keeps going slower than you think. I uh, moved Sir Griff out of the way, the way so he won't get painted. It's interesting, I was trying to move him and it was felt like I was dancing with him. <laughs> Thought it could be a good title of a book, Dancing with the Night, I don't know. Anyways, here we go. Last little bit. Gotta do this. The good news is it does look good. Like it looks like we have walls again. You know, it's not perfect, obviously it's still 150 years old, but uh, and it's just a priming coat, so you can still see through a little bit. The finishing coat will still come on. Now, there's a bit of a line, but that's more of a major macro wall thing. It's not a big deal. It's just that the sun shoots on it sideways, so. Yeah, so the good news is looking good. The bad news is taking forever. And so it's uh, testing my patience and my will a little bit. And just as we start turning on the camera, the sun emerges. Yay for blue sky today. Oy. Okay, so here's our urn that had broken its handle. This is his other nice little man face. And then this is the other side that we're trying to recreate. So we'll probably have to get some more, whatever, cement uh, to try and fill in those bits because I don't have them anymore. I did find a few extra pieces on the ground. I did have them all sitting out here at one point, 
but somehow along the line, I think they've been hit and maybe I'll find a few more in the grass. We'll find out, but we have a few main pieces and then we'll maybe have to fill in with some other like cement or something to try to make it work. But meanwhile, let's see what we can piece together. Oh, I know. Uh, also, people had made comments about Gorilla Glue. It does say it's for stone, masonry, um, all that kind of stuff. There's different kinds of Gorilla Glue. Uh, it was just the fastest and easiest one to snag before I left. Um, and I haven't seen a lot of stone adhesive um, and stuff here. I'm sure it exists. Um, but uh, meanwhile, let's see how it goes. Okay, we got our other half of the circle. It came together really nicely, actually. It's funny when you move the pieces around enough times, you eventually can uh, see where the crack and the break actually happens. So that's the bottom half of the circle here. This kind of looks like it's, I guess it's not breaking, but it looks cracked. Um, <clears throat> oh, look, you can see a, can you see that? There's like a spider web in there. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we're gonna let this harden up first and then we'll see how we can get it reattached and what pieces we're still missing to attach the bottom part of the rung. I assume there is some, but maybe we can supplement with something else for that. So we'll find out how it goes. Meanwhile, let's hope this will bake nicely in the sun. All right, there it is. Coat's on. Those are shadows, that's not, those are shadows. Yeah, I'm happy with the way it looks actually. Took a while. So now we're ready for the full coat. And we're also ready to get up here. Other than hearing birds, can you hear the hound dogs howling? I think they're on a boar hunt. And they must be close. Ish. Let's hope they don't chase them over here. Meanwhile, isn't this a delightful sunset? Birds are happy. It's finally warm today. Good end to the day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Say bye, Bing. Hey, Bing. <laughs> Oblivious. The one thing with like home videos on TV and renovation shows and all those kind of things, they do it in 20, 30 minutes and you get to see this transformation really fast and they have these big teams that come in and flip things really quick, uh, which is awesome. But then there's some of us who there's only a couple of us and that doesn't happen. Uh, and it's more real. Um, and that's the joy I think of some of the Chateau channels. It's all a little more real and things go a little slower and there's a little more problems and there's less people working on it and all of that. Um, but it really does take a long time when things are this tall and this big. Anywho, uh, so lots of painting, no question. And this guy, um, this is the side of the house that gets a lot of sun. So this guy also is in need of a lot of sanding because um, it has been peeling um, probably just because of the extreme temperatures. It just gets really hot on this side of the house. But normally I can just kind of sand lightly and get going on these old finishes because they're kind of worn out. But uh, this one has a little more issues, so we'll need a little more elbow grease and then off we go. All right, so let's see how this goes. It's a tricky little wall. Um, I have, I think I can get quite a bit. I have a pole for my roller. So as long as I can get across the top for the edging, I can probably catch the middle of the pole and I can move the right ladder over about two feet. So hopefully we can catch it all. We'll see. Go get the paint. It's Thursday morning and I wanted to take a look at this paint coat. Now that the light of day is there. It looks good. It's, uh, I mean, there's some streaky spots. You know, I probably could do use some more, but again, this is just an undercoat primer. And again, it was paint underneath. So yeah, I did it in the dark. It's always hard in the dark. So we'll get this painted and then we'll start on to this side. And uh, we've got a good day today. We have our friend, our neighbor, John, coming over and he's gonna help us talk to electrical, the electrical guys. So hopefully we'll be able to switch companies today. That'd be great. And also the roofers are coming back and they're bringing their video guys. They're gonna do drone shots of the house. So we're gonna ask for those and try to get them. Who knows, maybe in this video, maybe they'll take a while to get them to us, but uh, we'll try to get them 
yeah, should be, should be a good day. It's fun, the guys are shooting the drones right now. Bingley's giving them the barking. Let's see if we can see the drone, it was way up high. Way up there. I can't wait to get these drone shots. Okay, video guys are gone and we had another dehumidifier come. Now, we actually do have a dehumidifier and it fills up in 12 hours. So we decided to pick a second one up and run one on this floor too. I'm not sure, I'm not sure you can control the humidity. Like it's, again, it's not like an American or a Canadian house where it's all sealed up. There's all kinds of places for air to get in. So it's like, we've, we've tried to, you know, Leslie's put some plastic there to try to slow the airflow through, but, but there is airflow in this house. So you'll never be able to uh, fully, fully control moisture. But we'll do what we can, and this is going to help. Well, it's super nice. We just had our friend John uh, over, our neighbor. John and Marion, very nice young couple. And uh, he's actually from Texas. Uh, his, his one parent is from France, and the other is from America. Very fun. And so he came over and helped me on the phone with the power company. And we were seeing if we, they would let us switch the power company over to a different company. And they said no, because we have the wrong kind of meter. So I'm going to actually go over there. And take a look take a look at my there's my cool key and we're gonna go take a look and see the meter and see what we can do here and this is our power building yes we have our own electrical area danger of death never a good sign but we're gonna go in here and uh, take a look at that meter okay electricians European electricians gonna help me out so, I do not know what that is. Probably the number one rule of electrical is if you don't know what it is, stay away from it and don't screw with it. Looks like some kind of power interrupter. I'm guessing those are spare fuses down there. This is our, that's a small, small little box for these lights. That's our meter, I think. This blue meter that Someone told me it's 60,000 to replace. It's hard to imagine that that could be 60,000. And then we have we have that little plug-in guy that presumably sends the readings to uh, EDF so they can charge us. Then we got this big device. That's like, I'm presuming that's the main shutoff. Then we have four here, they're all off now. Um, Crepery, which I'm guessing is a restaurant. And those are carousels. So two of them were on, two of them were off. Now they're all off and the house chateau and then the bottom one's off so only one's on it's a big one though and there is power i call leslie and then of course this thing i'm not going to mess with i'm not going to walk over there that looks like a transformer and i'm making a lot of noise i don't know i don't know why we're paying as much as we are i'm going to call them and ask them but uh no simple thing owning a chateau this ladies and gentlemen is the look of defeat can't win them all. Can't win them all. You know, John made a good point. He said, why don't we call EDF and ask them why you're paying so much? Good advice. So the weird thing is, I just walked over to the restaurant and there's still power there. You know, I turned off, I turned off all four of those breakers and yet the restaurant has power. And then I went to the front gate. There's another power box up there. And I, I tried that and it still works. So I'm very confused. Anyways, doors are shut. I think we're done with people coming over. I'm going to lock the gates. And sit quietly on my chair. On the upside, the roof still looks great. That's a huge W. John was asking me, hey, has that solved your leak problems? I said, ah, most of them. And he said, that's that's normal. Say normal. Uh, it's normal with a big complicated roof like this for it to take a bit to get it all figured out. I guess you just gotta take the wins when you can find them. It's uh you know, you can't win them all. But it is a beauty. 
Well, we're gonna go and check on the hardening of my glue. But I went and saw this on the driveway here, unfortunately. So considering we have a dog, how about we clean that up? So the bummer of having people on site, stuff like this happens, but we'll get it cleaned up and all good. Well, it's a beautiful day and we're out planting plant number one and I think it looks good. I stuck them in the middle. I think normally you would have probably put them in each corner and had two, but I'm hoping this guy is going to be vigorous enough. They say it goes to four meters, so he should be a fairly robust rose uh, over time. So, and he's got several branches coming out from all directions, so I'm hoping it'll hit all the corners, at least these front two corners. So yeah, it's an experiment. We'll see. I had to take that other little David Austin guy out. Um, I had just plopped him in here a couple years ago just so that um, there was dirt for him to go in. So we'll find a new home for him and meanwhile let's get the red roses coming. So unfortunately before you can dig up another one this all needs to come out which is always a bit exhausting to be frank because <laughs> this stuff has been in there for a long time. But what did I see on the way by? Good heavens what in the world lives down there? Ay, ay, ay. I tell you, nature, it's a handful out here. Friday morning, I got the doors open, try to get some light in here. I personally love it when we have all these doors open, by the way. It, uh, I don't know, just feels so wide open and cool. Okay, we're gonna start painting this main floor. I've been beating myself up the last couple days because I've been like, man, I want this to be done and I feel like we're going so slow. And, uh, and it's really quite an interesting challenge when you, have your own business, I guess, in this case, a nonprofit, but you're kind of your own boss. And so you just want to get stuff done. And uh, I think when you have a conventional job, I mean, it's been a while since I had a conventional job, like uh, teaching, of course, is kind of like, you're, you're almost like on contract. You just get your teaching done and then everything's fine. And it's very manageable. Um, when I was a kid, I remember being a dishwasher and uh, you know, that's probably the most conventional job I had. You show up to work, and you put your hours in, you go home, you're done. And since then, it's all been jobs that are more like small business owning, where you, uh, you know, it kind of, what, what, what you do matters. Like if, if you're good and if you're fast and if you work hard, it goes well. But if you're not, even if you put the time in, it kind of doesn't matter, which is again, more like a small business. And, and the thing with that is you tend to feel, or at least I tend to feel like driven, like, and Leslie too, we're like we gotta get this done and we gotta work harder. And so we're trying to set limits so that we have a little bit of balance in our life. And so one of our limits has been, you know, we have breakfast in the morning and then we work till dinner on, on, on till practical things. So when, when it's time for dinner, five or six o'clock, um, then it's kind of like, I don't want to go back to painting in the evening. You know, we're gonna take the evenings off, we're gonna take Sunday off. But I noticed that e even then we'll, uh, you know, you finish up with the painting and then, and then you go and I sit down on my computer and then I start doing like IRS stuff or accounting stuff or articulation agreement stuff with the students or talking to schools and, and finances and bringing in. Uh, and, and so on a day like today, um, on a day like today, I would have loved to finish the painting, but we really need to buy a van. And so we, we actually found a van, a good van came up. Look at Leslie's nice, nice new flower there. Uh, we found an automatic transmission Renault, uh, Renault 2023 used, but, but not very used. And it's uh, for sale, but there's only, I think, six or seven automatics in all of France. And so we're gonna drive two hours today to get to a car dealership and take a look at it. And it's gonna take m much of the day. And, and so I'm like, ah, I wanna get the painting done, but this is important too, this is important too. So uh, you just got, I guess you just gotta, you gotta be patient and you gotta, learn how to live with uh, a slower timetable sometimes. That said, I have the morning. So let's see how much of this big, big, huge room we can get painted. All right, getting these watered in. I really wanted to get most of these in today because tomorrow it's supposed to rain. So I figured it's a beautiful day. I should be happy with the heat. This one needs a little more. And uh, we'll see how they leaf out. They're just starting, which is fun. So 
looks great. I think it's a good time to start them. I literally went outside to originally give you an update on this and I got distracted with planting and weeding and everything else. What else is new? All right, so the glue expanded, did its job. It's not perfect over there. There's pieces that we still don't have and there's pieces from inside that still need filled in. You'll see from the other side, they use cement and whatnot. So we'll do the same. I'll go in one day and um, mix up some cement and maybe grout or something and try to fill that in. We'll see how that goes, but anyway. But the funny little glue seems to be doing its job. It expanded, it doesn't look great, but you know what? It's on and it's holding with the pieces that I had. So better than without. Things going well. I don't know what time it is, but I got my shoes on, by the way, on the ladders. It is easier with shoes, I'll admit. And I'm up in the corner. There's the night. And this is where the stair piece, it's kind of hard painting over your head uh, with a roller uh, up on ladders and up on scaffolding. Um, and I will admit to you guys, as much as this is a beautiful house and I like this house a lot, my heart is not home renovation. My heart is uh, for what we're doing with young people and uh, the study abroad. And honestly, I can't wait for the kids to get here, for the students to get here. Um, that, that to me is so much more meaningful. Although, um, this is my job right now and this is what I need to do. And you, you have to have a house for these plate people and we, you know, you have to work within your means. So this is, this is, uh, that means painting for me today. Want to or not. Uh, you can see, it's nice, you can see the difference uh, between the painted and the unpainted. That's the primer and the white there. And, and again, we're going with the same color we had before. So it's more coats, but it's going good. I noticed the sun was out, and uh, so you get a nice look at the, the painted wall. It's only one finished coat, so we still may put a second on, but uh, what a difference between the unfinished side and the finished side. The best part of being able to just work from home and get stuff done is that when you've had enough weeding for a couple of hours and you have done some stuff, you can come in, have a nice a cup of tea, a little piece of lemon bread. Guess who wants in? Can you see him? <laughs> and take a minute and have a break in between before you're out again working on stuff. Oh, the stinker. Look at that. As soon as I come close. What a stinker. As we've gone on this journey buying a chateau, there's been a number of steps that have been incredible and unexpected. We have had uh, acts of kindness several times and I it's kind of a bummer because I wish I could tell you about each one sometimes we want to protect the privacy of individuals who have been really kind to us and have, have offered us things there's a couple that I've mentioned so you know some of them but there's been some really good ones and guys we had a good one a couple weeks ago remember earlier I was talking about the bird and flying out the window and being scared and and, and again very nerve-wracking without a, a, the regular salary coming in uh, to bite off a project like this um, and, and, and very frightening, but you know, a couple weeks after we were making the transition, we had a friend call and said, Hey, we love what you guys are doing. And we, um, would like to support the nonprofit and help you, um, by buying you guys a vehicle in France. I mean, that's huge. That's huge. And, and it was one of those things where we were kind of like, you know, what are we going to do? Cause you can't really bring your vehicles from, from the United States without significant, uh, difficulty and, and so we were without and, and, and things are tight and so it's been a huge huge gift and so exciting and so the past couple weeks we've been shopping and this week we went out and looked at a front runner okay this is our front runner it's an automatic transmission Renault traffic 2023 looks like a beauty look at those headlights by the way yeah this is a absolute beauty We'll take a look. Boy, they've taken a nice, they've done a nice job cleaning this. That does look good. It's like a new vehicle, wow. 18,000K, so it's about 11,000 miles. No, no, it's less than that. Is that right? Um, yeah, it's about 11,000. Has a backup camera, which is huge in Europe. 
That's huge. That's for sure. And I think the radar too. Yeah, it has the I reversing mean, radar. It's really helpful when you can't see something. Which that's... will save us one accident in a year. Oh my goodness. And rear AC, which the students will appreciate. Oh my goodness, that's for sure. I'm really impressed with how well they cleaned this car. Yeah, wow. Wow, I'm sold. Don't tell the salesman, but I am sold. Oh, it looks like you can even have a lower... You can have the luggage rack lower. That's clever, too. Nice. So it's nine passenger, but that middle front seat's pretty small. Really nice. Rear air. And look at this. even has lights. Lights for individual reading lights. Yeah, that is nice. That's really cool. This would be great for the students. You know what I like back there? What do you like? They have pouches. Oh yeah, pouches. And uh, armrests. Yeah, I know. Those between each ones. one, so that it's again, if we tried to put four people in a row, that'd be a little sticky with these things. But well, you can't because of the bumps. I know, it'd make it a little tricky. But it's a great for nine, that's for sure. Yeah. Guess what we just did? We bought a car. A van. Uh, yeah, it's our first one in France. Very excited. I uh, will show it to you. Mr. Bing, we had to sit this one out. <laughs> Leslie's gonna go rescue him. Yeah, it's a beauty. We really like it. Uh, very excited about it. We were gonna buy, we were looking at buying a new one. And uh, and then uh, we talked to a good friend uh, from Ashimire who was gonna sell it to us, but then he we found out that um, France has a pollution tax on big vehicles like this. And so to buy it, there would be a 20,000 euro tax added on. So suddenly it was not affordable anymore. So this is a 2003. It's technically a little less than a year old and it's a beauty. And it's gonna hold our students and um, should be a good safe drive for us. And this just makes our life better in so many ways. Cause getting the, well, for one thing, every time you, uh, every time you get in a little, a tight spot you're worried about having a scratch and getting charged a thousand euro um this one has a backup camera and also radar so that we'll know if we're gonna hit somebody plus there's all the complexity of all is picking up the vans they used to be a great deal but recently the vans have been extremely expensive to rent they're getting getting quite a bit worse and so and hard to find and hard to find yeah hard to book so now we know we always have one we just have to rent the second one and goodness. much easier to rent a car to go along with it so our students are gonna have um a good time riding in this, I think. Uh, Leslie's also talking about getting Griff Ray, uh, Loire Valley oh, Study Abroad logo. logos on uh, magnetic and putting it on the car. That'd be cool, eh? Yeah. So while we're in Poitier, we figure we may as well hit um, a truck or a brocante. Mm -hmm. And Leslie found something. What'd you find, Bess? We did. So with us here more often, we need to find a place for coats. Work clothes, coats, and then normal coats. So there's a little pocket under the stairs in the basement that I wondered if we found this kind of idea that then we could hang up old coats and put it against the wall. Yeah. And it's nice because it's hard to get hooks into the wall. So it the freestanding piece and it's quite a thin piece, you see. It's not, it's not that actually be really yet. good. It's I don't know that we'll fit it in our little car though. No, I know. Seventy euro is doable. And mm -hmm. a little mirror there. Put your keys in the, in the drawer. It's mm -hmm. really, you know, I would buy it if we had I know. If we had that beautiful van we just bought, we'd throw it in the back and I boom. Know. I know. Oh well. well here we go. Pass another boat. Look, would you like another boat? Yay! We, we've got too many boats. <laughs> she doesn't like the boat. Um, but this guy. That guy's not bad. 40 euro. Is it marble? I mean, it should be. Looks like marble and metal. Not great. It's a marble, nice little table. 40 euro. Yeah, it's a good deal on that. Hmm. So ever since we bought the chateau, I've been looking for a sideboard for the dining room. And inevitably that they're all too big, too long, too dark, too yellow, too something. Anyways, so I'm always on the hunt. Um, it doesn't have a stone top, which I kind of would like to have in terms of people setting stuff down and wrecking the wood. However, 80 euro, can't beat that. But to be frank, and I even like the mark tree on the top, like the, the inset. Super long. Too long. That's like, you think it would fit, it's hard, it's hard call. But you know what's good about it? Yeah. Is that it's high. We have really high wainscoting. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice and tall. This little guy, I looked at too. So I think he's the right length. I just don't really like him. Hmm. 
And I even like the little dippity doo, but. Yeah, get that mark in the middle though. Yeah, but we could fix that. They that's had something there, sanded down. Still, I just. Uh, it's a hundred euro. I, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I gotta get the measuring tape back in my purse. Saturday morning. Saturday's supposed to be my outdoor work day, but gotta finish this. It's looking good. And we're almost there. Maybe the afternoon we'll get some money in. And as you can see, we're not perfect. We've got some bubbling paint. So we'll see how it all dries out. And then maybe I'll just scratch it right off and try again. At least it's just one spot. Most of it's good. If you remember looking down here, this was wood and it was all, you know, knocked away. And so we, you would put some mud on it and we'll see what happens. We may just have to take a little piece out and put a new one in. Same thing on this side. And so honestly, we filled it a couple times and I thought, I'm just gonna throw some paint on and see what happens. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, we may have to pull it out still. We'll have to clean up the edge too with some uh, new trim paint, but maybe it works. We'll see. If I'm not mistaken, there's some more painting going on over here. This is our next project. Is there some painting going on in here? There we go. What you doing? Indeed. Oh yeah, look at that. Endless. This is this is the high high maintenance work. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Is that? Is, oh, that's the trim color. Mm hmm. Mm, good. All right. Walls are all painted. Slow lateral move here, and I noticed something coming over to Sir Griff. Sir Griff's back in his spot. Look at this. Check out. See that? I bet you that's for like a, a plume, like a big feather thing. We gotta get that, we gotta get that fixed up, don't we? And as we near the completion of the foyer and stair project, we start to turn our eyes on this room. You can see Leslie started. And soon we'll get in here with the wallpaper. It'll be fun to have a guest room that's fully done. Looking forward to it. Okay, daffodil update. They've made progress. Little snowdrops in the back starting to fade. And these will be popping any minute. Today's temperature will no doubt do it. We were in the city the other day and in the flush, they are blooming heartily. So the other ones under the tree, chillier. Haven't seen as much sun. Um, so the ones that are in the sun, I think they should be out any minute. It's Valentine's Day. We're up for a romantic date. Isn't this nice? The table's got some nice things on it. Prestige, here we go. It's nice we opened up our napkins and we found a nice Valentine's Day. They had little Valentine's in here. Well, I'm, I'm, my best menu is you. My best meal is you? I think I adore, I love my life since you've come into it. You've come here. I adore my life since you've entered. If I understand correctly, I'm with you. What did, what did he say this is? Uh, it's quinoa with quinoa. And then the top. It looks like shrimp. It does, but. I didn't say that. Yeah, the moose bouche. Here we go. The appetizers are here. Forward. Looks very nice. Very nice. Traditional French specialty. And I'm not exactly sure what mine is, but it looks fantastic. Yeah. Mm, bread looks great. Yum. In case you're wondering, that is avocado, grapefruit, and scallops. I think we're on scallops. It feels very much like tartar, fish tartar. It's good. It's uh, as far out there as I go. So we both went with the beef today, and it smells fantastic. Mm -hmm. I wish you could smell it. Yeah. The nice puree, beef. the roasted potatoes. Yeah, they do such a nice job in France. And more bread coming. You always know that you're in a good place when they come and you have an appetizer and then they change your calorie. Then we may change your calorie again. Look at the snapdragon. Snapdragon. Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, no, it's not called Mizuzu, though. But it looks really good. And what did she say it was? We have white chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got pineapple something dessert. Yeah, it looks good. We'll give them a try. And the dessert is here. I have the Snickers. They're, they're a version of the Snickers with a uh, homemade ice cream, and that looks fantastic. And you have the pineapple. Yeah, it's like a pina colada. Pina colada, pineapple. Okay. Yeah, with lime sorbet. It's very interesting. Here we go. Bon gourmet. Is that what she said? Yeah, or bon gourmet -dies. Do you see what I'm talking about with the emotional week? I mean, we start off and we're trying to paint the, these walls that the paint is peeling and scraping. We just painted it two years ago. It's frustrating, it's difficult, we're on ladders. Um, and then we get this electrical bill. You know, we're getting electrical bills for 800, 1,000 euro, we're trying to figure it out. Uh, can't for the life of us get it done. So things are bad, we've got birds, we've got animals dying and we're feeling bad about that. We got bats in the house. Um, and then we have this incredible gift this incredible gift and we were trying to get a purchase and we finally do and so it's such a beautiful high and then and then back to painting and then valentine's day what are we some ups some downs a lot of red for the meal and uh we'll see what happens next week <laughs> you never know that's the joy of living here Ooh. every week something else happens surprise